Transworld Sport recently made the journey to the Democratic Republic of Congo. The African country was formerly known as Zaire. In the east of the nation, in the North Kivu region, is the city of Goma, home to just over one million people. Goma lies on the northern shore of Lake Kivu, close to the border with Rwanda, and it was once where this land's former president and dictator, Joseph Mobutu, had his summer palace. Goma's recent history has been blighted by human tragedy. 20 years ago, the arrival into Goma of over a million refugees fleeing the Rwandan genocide was the spark for the first and second Congo wars. The surrounding countryside became a base for rebel groups, and in 2012, the M23 rebels occupied the city for almost a year. Since then, the UN and numerous NGOs have worked hard to restore peace to this troubled region and establish some sort of economic stability. I was here. I was right here when the rebels came to remove Mobutu. They came to recruit us, saying they needed child soldiers, calling us Kadogo, meaning child soldier. From here, we were then taken to Entebbe, where we were trained. During all of the training, they would keep telling us how we just had to remove Mobutu. That's all they said. Balizi Bagunda, or Kiba Mango as he's also known, fought as a child soldier in the Congo Wars, and he was witness to many horrific crimes. He lost his left eye to shrapnel during the war, and with it, his dreams of becoming a professional boxer. However, when he left the army and returned to his home in Goma, he was determined that the next generation would be spared the life he had endured. He set up a boxing gym in the terraces of Goma's oldest football stadium, for the street kids and for those fleeing the rebel army recruiters. <laughs> Most of these kids are orphans, survivors, child soldiers or street kids. They have to work in order to live, eat and sleep well, just like my elders taught me. Even though I left the army, I still knew how to work by using my hands. I decided to train them in boxing so that I could help them think for themselves and keep fit. And as I'm a car mechanic, I've taught them about this as well so that they can earn some money. Jobs are extremely hard to come by in Goma. Around 80% of the people here are unemployed. By teaching these youngsters boxing and training them as car mechanics, Kiba Mango hopes that they can avoid the temptations of crime or the prospect of joining one of many militia groups surrounding the city. Boxing is one of the most popular sports in DR Congo. The legendary 1974 heavyweight title fight between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, billed as the Rumble in the Jungle, was held in Kinshasa, the nation's capital. Ever since then, Congo's boxing gyms, like Kiba Mango's, have attracted young aspiring fighters with dreams of glory. In our area, we have suffered a lot of conflicts and wars. So I got involved with boxing to express what I feel in my heart. I also hope that one day I can help and save others from the pain I have experienced in life. We were sleeping on the streets and just generally having a miserable life. Occasionally we would be fighting with our friends and then Kiba Mango came and found us. He would take us out for runs around town and talk to us one to one. He told us to stop the life we were leading and to take up boxing. He said it would help us in the future. Decades of fighting between government and rebel forces in this region has left a generation of orphans. 
Promotion Basket, or PJB, was set up 11 years ago by a small group of Goma basketball players. They saw the sport as a valuable tool of engagement for the children whose lives had been so badly damaged by the conflict. Along with boxing, basketball is hugely popular in DR Congo. There are currently two Congolese players competing at the very top of the sport in North America's NBA. Dr. Dady Sale works for the Basketball Project. Whatever the situation, in times of conflict, we think that it's important to try and teach the kids. Our program didn't stop during the war. It may have stopped for two or three days, but afterwards we carried on. Quite simply, we had to prevent the children from joining militia groups. Kids need an education, and this is what PJB did with over 1,000 children. We wanted them to avoid being contaminated by war and going off to join the armed groups. Promo Jeanne Basquet is active all over Goma, working with thousands of kids. Christian Shamamba lost his father at a young age, and with his mother working in Rwanda most of the year, it's up to him and his sister to help run the household. He credits the program with giving him a focus to his life. It has changed my whole life. Because before I joined PJB, I had no direction and I would get into trouble quite a lot. But when I joined, I changed and started socialising and talking to people. I stopped all the bad and stupid things that I was doing. I suddenly had a focus. Now I believe that I'm a respectable person. Without a doubt, I'm going to stick with PJB and hopefully play for them in the future. Girls are encouraged to participate too, and PJB has the most successful women's team in the city. Thousands of children from the age of three upwards have been through the programme. PJB has been a real vehicle for social change and for greater gender equality in the Goma region. I have such a determination to succeed and a real love of basketball. When I'm playing, I feel completely relaxed on the court. I am taking it very slowly, but my wish is to get good enough in the sport so that it can take me to the United States of America or any other country. As popular as basketball is in Congo, there are no professional players based here, with payment to players still illegal. This means that most of the country's leading talents are forced to leave the country. Many go the few miles across the border to neighbouring Rwanda, where the standard of living is more than twice what they can expect in Goma. And for the very best here, the possibility of playing in Europe and even the NBA remains the ultimate dream. Personally, I'm convinced that one of our players will end up playing in the NBA. Most of the players from here develop in a good way, and they make a difference in the world. This is my motivation for coaching them. They all have the skills to play, and you can see that every day. I already know that one or two players are almost banging on the doors of NBA selection. PJB's senior teams have supplied three players to the under-18 national squad, and there is a constant stream of young talent being discovered here. Congolese NBA star Bismack Biyombo, who plays for the Orlando Magic, makes regular visits here, and he's also now on PJB's board. Despite all the difficulties that Goma has been through, such as wars, genocide, poverty and even volcanic eruptions, it's important to note that I am very positive and optimistic. You can see positivity right through the PJB programme with kids who didn't go to school, ending up at university. Despite everything, we believe that through coaching, sport and education, 
It can change these children's lives. Some here still look across Lake Kivu with envy towards Rwanda, with its relative economic prosperity and political stability. Yet for many in Goma, there remains a fierce determination to create change at home, and sport will continue to play a vital role in this.